Uh, all right. Well, we're rolling. Then. We're rolling. We're rolling, and I'm recording. Let me make sure. I am recording. All right, good. This way, if I'm re- if I'm playing it live, it's going to be recording on on YouTube anyway. So this way, I have it on both ends. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to welcome, welcome to Rat Salad Review. This is a uh, special interview with. Uh, I'm. I hope I'm correctly. Is it Pete? Yeah, it's Pete. I mean, it's just like uh, like the U.S. name. Like Pete. the U.S. name, just spelled. I just have this. I just different. have this weird spelling because in Germany, well, if, if you write, if you do, if you use the uh, the U.S. spelling, right. everybody, everybody would call me Peter, and uh, so I figured for all these uh, people who are not familiar with the spelling of Pete and how to pronounce <laughs> it right. I just put the uh, well. I mean, in German, if you read the name, it sounds just the way it sounds. Pete. Right. Oh, <laughs> good. Very good. And uh, Silk is your last name. Yes, it yes. is. <laughs> and you are from the band Iron Savior. That's the fact. Yep. And you have just released this album, Iron Savior: <laughs> Kill or Get Killed. Exactly. Yep. This- oh, I got the Digipack version. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's. I have, of course, uh, this is the Japanese version. It's not as fancy, but it has one extra track on it. <laughs> oh, yo, you don't got the two CD version? No, no. Um, we actually, uh, this time we didn't make a, a limited edition for, for Europe. Um, because, I mean, this we have the, the CDs, uh, we have the vinyl, we have, the, uh, we have this box set, and, and yeah. that, was, uh, that was enough for us. Wait a minute, I need to close the door. <laughs> So eliminate kitchen noise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no. And um, for that cause, um, um, we, we didn't do a limited edition or, or, or an, a regular album, which is in a, in a, if you ask me, it's, it's, oh, it's kind of stupid anyways. I mean, it's, right. it's the, the, the price difference is, is one euro or so. And you get, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, and, most of the people buy the limited edition anyway, so right. the only reason for the, why this regular version exists is that you can have a limited edition. So, <laughs> and I'm still, I, honestly, I'm always surprised that there are people who actually buy the regular album. Why would you do that? I mean, right. why? <laughs> I, yeah, especially when there's, you know, extra bonus tracks and stuff, you know? Yeah, and you, all you, you save a euro. Wow, what can you do with a euro? Wow, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, the screen moved. Um, yeah, because I was actually looking. There's a Japanese version that comes with two CDs, and it's got... Um, um, yeah, because, I mean, yeah, with that... I mean, the Japanese, they're really, they, they insane. I mean, they want it all. <laughs> they want it all, and they all want these, these bonus tracks and these extras and stuff because they're always in fear that, that uh, well, I mean, CDs who are printed in, in Japan are really expensive. So, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. import CDs in Japan, even though there's custom on it, still are cheaper than, than the Japanese versions. And, right. And of course, that's the that's one reason why they are always afraid of the evil imports, and that's why they need all these uh, these extra goodies on there. I mean, it sounds like really massive stuff, but the uh, um, thing is that uh, in J- the Japanese uh, the Japanese record company never released uh, the Megatropolis 2.0 album, and so oh, really? the second CD it's it does not contain yet millions and tons of extra tracks just right. made. For Japan, is no. they have two tracks from this uh, from this um, Megatropolis 2.0 album, and well, mm-hmm. and they get one extra uh, song, Brian Adams uh, "Run to You," and that's basically it. So that's the only uh, difference. Uh, that's not it. There's one more track. Is it? Yeah. What is? I don't remember. What? It's over overkill or over. No, something. Yeah, no, 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 no. But overkill, you can also get. Uh, you can also get. Uh, well, yeah, okay. Oh, you're right. It's on the Japanese edition, but it's actually could, um, but a you demo. You could also it have gotten it. I have to say, you could also have gotten it um, from AFM because this is part of the, uh, the so-called fan box. It's the, ah. this, uh, this limited edition box that they only made 333 uh, units, right. and uh, unfortunately, they were all sold even I think 
couple of some weeks before release, the, the, those things were sold out. So, wow. um, well, Overkill you have to get from YouTube. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, because somebody I had a couple of people ask me so I, I wanted to get people's other questions if they wanted to ask you anything while I had you on, and one of the questions was about the uh, Japanese uh, release with the with that song on it because it says it's like a demo or something and it was from like 1981 or something. It's he said. really it's really it's it's old. It's one of the first uh, recordings Kai and I ever did. Oh and wow! It, it's from a f the very first band called Gentry, and right. I think it was not necessarily the first song i ever wrote but definitely one one of the very first songs i wrote and uh, yeah and we really um, invented insane recording methods because at that point of course we had no access to multi-track recording systems and stuff like that so we had to come up with uh well whatever came to our sick minds uh, <laughs> teenagers and uh, so yeah this is uh, this is a nice thing um, to be honest, I'm quite sure that it'll pop up uh, on YouTube sooner or later, and uh, it's, worth, it does. <laughs> it's worth checking it out. Um, I have a nice uh, audio comment uh, on this recording explaining a little bit the background of how this was done, mm -hmm. and uh, well, a little, little, little story to 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 this. Yeah, I did that because uh, I thought it's this is a good. Uh, Nice goodie for the fan box, uh, makes it a little bit interesting. And actually, people um, are getting a lot of good feedback from it. People really find it interesting and uh, and a little uplifting, get a little bit back, some background of uh, Kai and Pete as uh, teenagers and, uh, yeah. well, <laughs> the pre, pre, pre Halloween stuff and stuff like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. It shows the beginnings of, uh, I guess, Iron Savior, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, very cool. Let me say, I have a whole bunch, not a whole bunch of questions. I'm not going to get too crazy. Oh, no, I just, it just turned off. Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, I love all this technology. It just never, nothing ever goes right. <laughs> so you got to start? Uh huh? So we start again, or you just. Continue? No, no, no. No, it's, it's, it's Facebook. I'm just going to get it from my phone now. Not a big deal. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I just gotta find the post. Oh, here it is. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, Jan from Jan Egg. Eg oh, I can't even pronounce these names because they're all from other countries. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just go Jan. Uh, he wants to know how was the time working on the album Coming from the Sky from the band Heavenly. Jan, is that spelled? J A N. Okay, that's called Jan, by the way. Jan. All right. See, I'm terrible. <laughs> no, that's why you have me. So, yeah. <laughs> Jan. Jan. Which is good to know because I have I have Jan from uh, Paragon, which I'm sure you know from uh but he is also pronounced Jan. Jan, yep. Not Jan, okay. Jan. Jan, Jan. No, no, not Jan, not a long A, short A, Jan. Short Jan. Yeah, Jan. Got yeah. it now? Jan. Everybody <laughs> wanted to know how the time was working on Coming from the Sky by uh, Heavenly. Um how I did that, or, or yeah, like how, how did did you enjoy working with that band? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, um, I only made the very first album with these people, yeah. and uh, well, I was pretty young at that time, and they were even younger. Um, I had a record out, and I thought that uh, I knew everything, <laughs> and of course, I was well. I was a little, maybe a little bit pushy as a, being a, as a producer, but right. I think on the other hand, uh, they really had some. Well, they, let, let me put it like this: they had some lessons to learn, which I gave them. I delivered those lessons, <laughs> and um, I think it was for the good of the album. And really, I really still like this album. I think it's yeah. been good production, and um, also after I had reforged it a little bit um it was uh, it, it turned out even better but uh, they were c c really sensitive people i mean not all of them but uh, but i think max uh, or, or the, the, i don't know i forget how the, the lead singer is called uh, he was he he felt that i was a little bit invading his his musical creations too much and that's why oh, wow. we we did not uh, continue working together um, and uh, on the other hand, I think that they really learned quite a lot 
which definitely helped them <laughs> yeah, yeah. for their further for their further undertakings and oh yeah they and yeah. I, I have good memories for this album also um uh, but it would be a lie to me to just call everything was great there were some some uh, some issues about this and mm. uh, and uh, well i wouldn't say reflecting now back at those times that i did that i that my decisions were wrong it was just the way i presented it to the band that could have been a little bit more um diplomatic put it like this right <laughs> <laughs> Now, did you do the same thing when you worked with Blind Guardian, or did you have, let them have more say? Um, well, I mean, I, I'm, I've, I've never been that kind of person who would not speak up if somebody would not be right, you know. And right. uh, yeah, of course, I always did with Blind Guardian, but uh, well, the, the, my input was wanted at this point, you know. I, I, didn't have to, to 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 give it, you know, unwanted, and mm-hmm. and also Brian Guardian had a pretty good vision of themselves at the time already, so there was right. not too much going wrong with uh, with these guys recording, and it was just more, um, the, well, I was more uh, focusing on putting their vision um, to tape at that mm-hmm. time, um, in the most uh, in the most appro- appropriate way, you know. Right. Have you heard the new uh, remixes they did? Um, no, to be honest, I have not. Uh. I saw the uh, saw the new artworks that uh, Felipe was doing. Yeah, they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're not I, so I, on it. I, they 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 good, but right. um, but uh, but uh, I didn't find the time actually to listen to the to uh, the. Uh, you, might so. you, you might not want to. You might not want to. Uh, probably not. Uh, <laughs> you might be a little disappointed. I was. Yeah, I mean, uh, with Blind Guardian, for me, is that I, it's just to do this little bit. I, I lost a little track of Blind Guardian when they really evolved too much into a direction where I was not following anymore. Right. To be same, same as me, yeah. And, uh, you know, but that's not prove them wrong, I'd say. No, no, I think they're doing okay. <laughs> They are all right. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Um, uh, is a, a question about Kai uh, from Windu Nur, Nurhadi. Uh, he's uh, really interested to know your time with Kai Hansen before Halloween. I guess in Gentry. Yeah, it was uh, actually in Gentry. Um, uh, then we had we called ourselves Second Hell for quite a time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for a short time we were also called uh, we were called Kronos, and mm-hmm. then we ended up as Iron Fist. And yeah. after Iron Fist, it was uh, Halloween. And well, yeah, I mean, uh, I met Kai when I was eleven, and um, I we played together in those bands I just named. Um, I think I left Iron Fist. When I was seventeen or eighteen, so I don't oh, wow. remember. But uh, so we played uh, for a really long time together in all these kind of bands, and uh, and really laid a lot of ground, so to speak, for uh, for Iron Savior and also, of course, Halloween and Gamma Ray and everything that that evolved yeah. from that. A um, yeah. lot of stuff, or well, I mean, a lot of stuff, but let's say a lot of initial sparks already were happening at those times. For example, mm-hmm. the, the, the very, very first idea for a song, uh, Iron Savior, goes back to that year. We had a song called oh, really? Iron Savior, but it sounded totally different at that time. And okay. uh, um, well, years later, I, I just, just because this, uh, uh, this, this, those words, Iron Savior, they sound like stick to my mind. I always liked them. And... Uh, when it came to write my very first song after returning to be an artist again, uh, I thought, well, Iron Savior is a worthy song, which I can yeah. just take from the old days and, and, and work on it. And uh, we also played um, Metal Invaders in a pretty, pretty much, pretty much version like the way it is now, a little bit different. We also we already played um, Phantoms of Death. We played Gorgar. Um, oh wow! Oh, so you were murderer at 
all, all the uh, really, really early uh, Halloween stuff. Oh, wow. And um, we, also, we also had a very elaborate song called uh, Seven or Six Minutes Long, or even longer, called Second Hell, which uh -huh. actually then was later on used by Kai and, and reworked on the, the Heading for Tomorrow album into the song Heading for Tomorrow. Oh, really? So okay. all these, these, these uh, atmospheric parts uh, in, the, in the middle, like it's the very long part, two minutes mm. or something. That was, uh, that was exactly the way uh, we had it, uh, well, in the rehearsal room as kids already. And, oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, well, really, as I said, a lot of initial sparks were happening in, in this yeah. period of our life. Uh, which I think both for, for all of us, uh, for Kai, me, and, and everybody else, has been very, very important. Yeah. Did, were you, were, was there ever any talks of you being still with them to you know, uh, start Halloween at all, or you were just ready to, to leave by then? No, at this point, I was, you know, because um, they're always, Kai always has been a little bit more. Um, dedicated to music to put it like this there for me there always was stuff besides music you know and <laughs> yeah. and that's why i at this point there was girls quite easily which i had which i was found, found more interesting than uh, playing uh, playing metal in a metal band and so <laughs> i focused on that for a bit <laughs> and uh, well and then later on um, in my life uh, when i came to the decision when I was doing Iron Savior, whether I want this uh, to become a main issue, and if so, how would I allow this to affect my life? And um, I pretty early made the decision that, uh, that because I had family at that point already, I had two kids, and uh, wow. I said, well, I don't have these kids to so don't see them, so uh, right. family is the most important thing for me in my life. Everybody has to decide that for for himself, of course. And of course, music is another very important thing, but the priority definitely lies on my family right. and my children. And um, of course, I wouldn't say that it tied me down here and there, but uh, of course, my development as an artist is, of course, different than, uh, well, if you're young and alone and you just, you just want it. And that's right. all you really focus on. You know? mm -hmm. It's not that I didn't want the success bad, for Iron Savior, but uh, as I just said, there were other things in life that I already also had to focus on. And uh, uh, to be honest, Wayne, uh, now looking at my life, uh, I turned 55 this year, and I have this family. Happy birthday! I have this really, really, uh, and I'm in the position that I can do my music here. I can, uh, I can do Iron Savior. I have success. I have get appreciation from uh, all across the world. Really. Yeah. And um, well, I'm not I'm not getting rich by it, but um, I have a pretty yeah, have a pretty cool life, you know, because I have yeah. I have both I have country and western. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not doing too bad you're because you got, you you're, uh, you got 13 albums. Wait a minute, where's the camera? 13 albums. Yeah. Uh, so you're not doing too bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Kill or Get Killed is the is the official tenth studio album. I mean, oh, that's true. The, I forget I have uh, the EP in there and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but EP and DVDs and 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 Writing on Fire also. It's not really a studio album and stuff. Like but right. yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a lot of material I just, I put out in the, in the past yeah. few years, and uh, yeah, I'm really proud on that. And uh, make sure that I can sit here in my you know my little powerhouse studio, and then wow. And just do this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. You get to do it at all at, uh, I guess, what's that, your, your house, I guess? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, well, nowadays you don't need big studio facilities anymore because, uh, I mean, hello. This is my little <laughs> Mac Mini, and everything is in there. There's, uh, wow. and, and this little dude here, the uh, uh, Apollo. Uh, well, audio um, interface, yeah. universal audio. That's really all you need nowadays. Uh, yeah. Of course, you can you can load in tons of stuff and equipment you actually never use, and you just have to dust off like every every month, you know, because you're right, not yeah. using it. And, 
<laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, uh, it makes recording and producing music in a professional way um, really easy nowadays. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do the same. As you can see, I got my drums behind me, and I'm I just started another band with my friend, and uh, yeah, I got the interface, and I'm like, how is it that easy? I, you know, it's you can't get any easier than that. No, 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 absolutely. Well, of course, there lies a lot. There's some good and there's some bad in that, of course. Right. Know? Yeah. There is. Yeah, especially with drums. I'm in my garage, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> You can only get such good sound out of a garage, but it's, you know what, I'm not paying no, no, to no, rent I, the I, studio. No, no, I'm, I, if you know what you're doing, then of course uh, you can get a good sound basically in, in any surrounding. You just have to know what, how to do it, you know. No, I, I was just yeah, exactly. more or less driving to the point that uh, it, since creating music or not creating music, because that is the thing, well, producing music for like this becomes so so easily and so so generic, more or less. For right. so it's possible if possible. So it's possible for basically everybody. If you buy a little bit uh, for a couple of hundred bucks, you can get yourself equipment where you can do some yeah. decent recording with. You know that is just a fact today. Um, problem for me is that, uh, of course, because that is so. Um, you have these these tons of, uh, I hate to say, but useless releases. You know that you have. It's, yeah. it's like it's like um, it's like crazy. You know this is uh, <laughs> this is same thing is happening with music. To, if right. you ask me, it may. I don't want this to sound arrogant, but uh, it is like this. I mean, there are so many releases month by month. Fuse the people, and because they layer like 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 a crust of. <laughs> <laughs> something you know on top of all the good stuff you know and right. it's really hard to find the good stuff in a decent recording studio for a thousand bucks a day well right. who the fuck could afford that nobody I so the record company had to pay for it yeah, and they exactly. thought, thought twice or even what well, if where they would give their money to would would this money come back you know because then there right. was so uh, there was well, they were just thinking about it more than today. Today, you can just go to the, uh, well, you can just sit down in your room, record something, and you have a master, you can give, you give it to a record company, and the record company takes it and, well, just release it for free. Yeah. And there are lots of uh, record companies out there who who don't do quality because their their thing is quantity. They just put out right, quantity, exactly. quantity, 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 and that's how what they make money on because every release sells at least a little bit and if you put out quantity well you can make a living on that also but mm. that is so crap Wayne uh, no, God, I'm really yeah. sick about this and well that of course is uh, coming back to Iron Savior because that of course in a way helps a band like Iron Savior or Gamma Ray or Halloween because what happens is that people really don't want to waste their precious money on crap and the risk yeah, exactly. in, in picking crap um, out of those, let's say, 1,500 releases a month is quite high because there is a lot of crap. So there what do you do? You get back to familiar stuff. You buy names you know already. You know, right. For example, and, and this could come back, coming back to Iron Savior. If you buy an Iron Savior album, if you like the band before, you can be pretty sure that you're not going <laughs> to be wrong in buying a new one. <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly and you're and you're going to be listening to actual musicians playing on the album instead of somebody just sitting at the computer you know putting in loops of drums <laughs> that's right that's that's most of the time we play yes no <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> <laughs> really great i just uh. <laughs> hey I, I guess you can make music however you want to make it you know but whatever <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, the way the way you create music doesn't matter to me, honest. What what counts is the result. If the result is killer, then I don't right. care. It how it's done. good. You can record yeah. drums in a garage or at the uh, LEZ. I, I don't care. It doesn't matter. You know, the yeah. result is everything. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, another question. Uh, Stefan Munch. That, that's an easy one. Uh, what song from the first Halloween? EP and Walls of Jericho or even later songs that you helped them write and I think you kind of answered that before. Yeah, I think that it was answered before. Yeah, I should have read that. <laughs> it was, sorry. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> okay. All right, yeah. Exactly. Other question. <laughs> Interview over now. Uh, All right, see, uh... that's it, Wade. That's. <laughs> uh, hey, you owe me. You screwed up with the times. You owe me. <laughs> no, I did. I, I did sent too. you. I sent you your own writing saying nine p.m. Cause... your time, and that was. <laughs> Because I was agreeing with you. <laughs> uh, Andreas wants to know, any memories of Ingo? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, with Ingo, I had... Uh, he was really a great character. I really liked him a lot. Uh, when he met him the first time, um, we connected right away. We had, like, sort of, I don't know, let's, let's say a connection. And I was... Um, I followed... I followed his development um, also um, with, with Halloween and also when Halloween were on this, uh, this pause um, mm. for a couple of years. That really was hard for him because he, 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 wanted, he wanted Halloween to happen. And, uh, well, I mean, and, well, I mean, we met um, in Hamburg regularly. He had, had good times, some not so good times here and there. And yeah, I was really shocked and moved when 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 he killed himself. You know, it yeah, was yeah, really, yeah. really really bad. Really, yeah. And, yeah, just... and at his funeral and stuff, I really couldn't couldn't believe it. And, and it, was, mm. it was so personal, you know. I know his father and everything, and uh, so oh, that was that was sad. Um, I think that, that Ingo would have deserved to to have a good life, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was shocked when uh, when I got into the Halloween. It was like nine, 91 or something like that. And then, uh, but over here in the states, it was you know, obviously no internet at that time, so I really didn't know much about the band. And Ingo was like my favorite drummer, and I learned how to play, you know, power metal, you know, through drumming and stuff through him. And then, uh, you know, once um, 94 came out and then Master of the Rings came out, and I saw there's no Ingo. I'm like, what? What happened? <laughs> And then, you know, I, I finally find out that all that stuff went down. That You know, it's very upsetting. Yeah, it's just... really, really upsetting. And um, it was for, for me, it was also really hard to see that how, how, he's, how he was suffering before. So, I mean, right. it, it had a reason why he did that. It was not, yeah. not something that just came to his mind. There, of course, was a, was a story to it. And, yeah, I mean, that was, that was, that was sad. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Very sad to find that out. Uh, somebody wants to know, uh, Tuco wants to know when uh, a tour in Brazil will be. <laughs> Tuco guy, yeah, I know. He also keeps asking that. Oh, he does? Oh, I mean, uh, uh, it would be, yeah, would be next Monday. It, we're going to start next Monday. We're going to come to Brazil now. <laughs> All right, Tuco, you heard that. Next month. Right after the right after the U.S. tour, which will happen next weekend. Uh, <laughs> will you ever plan on coming to the U.S.? Oh, uh, it will be. I just talked about uh, about that with my bassist Jan, who also is called Jan. <laughs> Jan. <laughs> so, yeah, I said everybody in Hamburg is called Jan. Oh, no, just we had just uh, had a rehearsal, and on the way back we were just uh, talking about the album and also how great it would be to well to to perform in the states because that's yeah. something we haven't been doing. Right. I, I played with Iron Savior in the states uh, a couple of years ago. I think a couple of years, a couple of more years, two thousand eight, I think it was. Oh, really? uh, on, on the Prokbau Festival in Atlanta, and we also oh, okay, had a yeah. single, single show at BB King's in, in New York. Oh, but, did, when was that? Well, that was also 2008. Oh man, it wasn't wow. very I had well. No idea. I would have went. Yeah, it was. It wasn't too well attended. Maybe it was not really well promoted. Uh, but that's, uh, that's even but even better. It doesn't, for me, ma I... it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I played BB King, New York. So that's on my that's yeah. the thing I had done. You know, <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, <laughs> um, uh, at that point, uh, Young was not uh, in the band. Uh, at this point, uh, at, th at that point, we had a different bass player, and so we never performed together in the States. And uh, I think this is something that uh, would be really awesome. And mm. I don't know, maybe the god of heavy metal has. Uh, well, uh, has mercy on us and will will make it possible someday for us to return to the States and uh, play a couple of shows. Say, baby, well, 
know, do a small East Coast tour, you know, fly there, yeah. play a couple of uh, shows, and then and then fly back. That would be really cool to happen. But uh, you know, I am also known to be a realistic guy, and the <laughs> and the truth is that flying four people to the United States, of course, is quite a lot of initial costs and right, uh, yeah. and uh, well. I'm quite sure that uh, that the ticket sales would cover that cost, but of course you also want to make some profit on that. And mm -hmm. um, so it's not. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but uh, it's not as it's not a safe thing, you know. Right. But it's not. Well, I mean, of course, I mean, we are a small band in a huge country. What can I say? <laughs> so, yeah, of course, yeah, there yeah, are yeah. sales. We have, do have sales in uh, in the States as well, but uh, um, well, not almost as much as Metallica, I would say. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. They are doing a little bit better than us. <laughs> Nobody's ever heard of them, though, so I, I don't yeah. know how they're doing it. <laughs> they must be a new band. But hopefully, with this new album... Yeah, absolutely. Kill or get killed. Yeah. You will break and, uh, it's coming back to Tuco, that of course... So why do you mind uh, telling me about the new album? I, I love the new album, by the way. And so do um, the two other guys I do the show with. Uh, we kind of did like a little uh, review of it yesterday, and uh, they both love it. Uh, one of the guys on my show, he's not really into um, like uh, power metal type uh, bands, but um, he actually really liked it. And so did the other guy. He he really loved it. It was the first Iron Savior album he heard, and he liked it a lot. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm very I'm very happy with this album. Um, still, I have to say, because uh, um, yeah, it's 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 really. I, I, to be honest, I didn't uh, expect it to turn out uh, the, the way it is now. I I had actually just as usual. If I start writing an album, I don't. I have no expectations. I have, I don't right. have a, a, a vision or or a special plan on how to do it. Right. Um, I just, the, I think the only um, the only general direction I had, uh, which I wanted to move into, was uh, because on Titancraft I was more open to adding some more, a little bit more progressive elements to the songwriting. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be a good idea if the follow up could be. Uh, a little bit more straightforward in terms of songwriting, and that having that in mind, I, I started writing the songs for that. Yeah. And um, so, but after three songs, I had to stop because I had to um, I had to start working on this uh, uh, re-recording project we were just doing uh, recently. Um, right. This double uh, CD, "Writing on Fire," reforged, where we recorded um, I think. 20 songs of our back catalog from yeah. the old days. Yeah, that right yeah exactly. That yeah. Baby. And uh, actually, there was something that uh, that I didn't thought it would it would uh, last. It would take so much energy to do. Mm. Um, I enjoyed it highly. I have to say because um, it was really cool doing um, all these songs and um, and working on them. And and the best part about it was that. When I was while I was working on these songs, all these memories from the from the from the specific periods of uh, mm -hmm. um, of I was in um, personal and also band wise uh, when the song was written and released uh, came back, and so it was yeah. uh, really something like a, a time travel to uh, to all the uh, well early days of Iron Savior. And uh -huh. um, I don't know after that was done. Of course, I got back to songwriting from uh, for Kill or Get Killed and. And maybe well, some of the DNR from the from the old days somehow swapped over to the songwriting of Kill or Get Killed because I, yeah. uh, I was still drawing maybe some inspiration from that. Not mm -hmm. not really on a, on a on a conscious level, but maybe more on a subconscious level. And I think that's why uh, the album is the way it is right now. And uh, to be honest, I think it's one of the best albums I've ever done. And I think it definitely, mm. for my personal taste. Definitely plays in the same league than Unification, right. uh, Condition Red, and The Landing. It's yep. really it it has the potential to become a band classic album. Yeah, I think so too. I when I first put it on, I'm like, oh my god, this sounds it's completely different from the other out. Not hugely different, but the sound, uh, like the production and the guitars are even a lot different on this album too. What made you switch the uh, sound up? 
Well, um, um, actually, it is pretty much the same um, sound setup I used um, on Timecraft already. Um, it's, okay. it's an angled power. It's an angled power ball. Mm -hmm. um, same guitar, and um, but well, maybe the, the setting was just a little bit better this time because I think the guitars are, <laughs> uh, they have a little bit more. Um, let's say. Uh, they have a little bit more bottom, and they have a little right. bit more punchier, and maybe yeah. they're a little bit more more direct in your face. And, mm -hmm. um, and that's what I noticed right away. Yeah, that, I think they're basically just a dB louder, you know, than really? uh, okay. uh, on than on Titan Craft. Um, the drum sound also changed, not too much, but a little bit. Um, mm. I think I made it. Drums are more. Uh, also a little bit more punchier than on the uh, than the previous records, mm -hmm. and I think all in all um, the balance of the stuff is really cool. And one thing that I really have to say, I ha I, I uh, when I was doing the uh, the mix down, I purchased uh, a new uh, mastering tool, which is really insanely great. I have to admit, which um, one? It's from it's from Brainworks, and it's called uh, well, what the hell what's the <laughs> the name of it, um, Master Desk. Yes, it's called Master okay. Desk, and okay. um, it's uh, it's from Brain Brainworks Plugin uh, Alliance, and uh, well, it's it's it, actually it's made uh, for people who have no idea about mastering. They they <laughs> the, the commercial is that well now your drummer <laughs> can master. <laughs> That I am listening intently. So is my friend. No, believe me, I have no idea. We're doing everything ourselves, and uh, we have no idea. So, uh, so that because it's it's really simple. I mean, of course, if you crank it too much, then of course you can do. But this thing really does magic to your to your mix bus, and uh, um, and of course um, the the magic that I also did is that I didn't compress the album as hard as I did before because uh, and that but that's why it's breathing a lot more. I think it has more yeah. dynamic. And mm -hmm. um, I think that really serves the the whole production really really well. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I tell you that because the, you are from the from the well, well you know what I'm talking about. If I've, if I've talked to non technical people, then of course it's a waste of time. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean uh, Master Desk is something I really highly recommend. The premium right. mastering chain is really awesome. And uh, well, and don't. Just you well don't don't crank the signal because mm. I just learned about that also. I mean, for example, iTunes, what they do is if you're if you're too loud, they right. just squeeze your stuff down by twelve dB. And twelve wow. dB really is a lot. Right. Know? And so if you wanna you want, if you wanna avoid this, just don't do this 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 heavy limiting anymore. I think mm. this 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 loudness battle Oh my god, it's terrible. It's over. It's over, and I'm really, really so. happy that it's that it's over. That is history. Of course, you need good compression and you need limiting to make things punchy, mm. but it's not that the that the well the the, the lever meter does not have to <laughs> be like this all the time. You know? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I got an album the other day, and it was you can hear that it was too loud. Yeah. And right. I can't believe they were still doing it because I, I like you said I, I I thought they were done doing that kind of stuff, but apparently no. Some some more more than mainstream kind of bands are still doing it. Well, I mean, if they want to, they can. It's. I mean, this is so stupid. I mean, it's because everything is limited at, yeah. at this time. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not that you that you that you play your loud record in the discotheque and people say, "Oh wow, what is this?" <laughs> it's not happening because everything runs right. to the same limiter to the brick wall, and so it just sounds like the rest. Even right. it's it's just more limited. That's all. And also on the radio, it's not like that. Oh, once over the, that that your super loud mix turns out super loud. No, it's it's the same, just right. more limited. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And so it's it's really it's nonsense. Too. Hmm. Oh, well, that's interesting. I will I will make sure my friend watches this show and we will get that uh, or look into that mastering thing because he he did get something, but I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. Well, it's not. You can not only use it for mastering. Of course, you can use it as a simple uh, bus compression or whatever. You know. Okay. It's a really useful, versatile tool. I, re I really recommend it. And uh, uh, it's not that. It's not that expensive. I think it's like two hundred fifty bucks for the plugin. And oh wow! You should really go for it.
Nice. And we will sound exactly like love Isaac. It. You, you're going to love it. I swear to God, you're going to love it. You should, uh, you should be a spokesman for them. <laughs> you just sold one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I love this album. This album was great. And uh, if you like Iron Savior, you're going to love this album. Obviously, because it sounds like Iron Savior. And uh, I got one more question. And if I don't ask, uh, I don't want him to be upset because he's a very good friend of mine. He's from Sweden. Johnny. Right. Johnny Pedersen, my buddy. Right. <laughs> he wants to know, he's got a, a couple funny questions. Uh, how was your last visit to Sweden? How? Yeah. Well, I think the last time we, we went to Sweden was on a festival in Motala. And uh, it, unfortunately, the festival was not very well attended because it was, I don't know, it was more like a, a private festival. It's called like right. and, uh, and, and so, well, and that, that memory was it's the best memory of, <laughs> of course. Of course, everybody was were were friendly and uh, but uh, you know driving there and then uh, you know uh, playing the show with uh, almost no people that of course is not so thrilling huh. to be honest. And, right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. But uh, really, really, I mean, super nice people. We know them for a very long time, and mm. uh, of course, on a private level, we always had good. Uh, memories about Sweden. Oh, very good. See, Johnny, he likes Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he wants to know also, what do you fear most in the world? What do I fear most? Yeah. In the world? Oh, Brexit? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Swedes invading Germany? No, I don't know. Just kidding. I have, I have no <laughs> it's not no. I'm 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 quite a positive person, so I don't I don't have too many fears to be honest. Mm. I think well, I mean, of course, what I fear is that some insane people like Trump or uh, or, or or else, you know. Hey, uh, you watch blow, it. He's our president. <laughs> yeah, uh, blow up the world for for whatever, and uh, we, you know, it's just an example. I mean. Politics, mm. of course, have a lot of power, and uh, if they misuse power or if they are doing stupid or crazy things, uh, a lot of shit can emerge from that. Yeah, it's scary. It's very scary. And uh, also, what uh, what where I'm thinking of or what moves me is um, well, it's not it's not it's not that they are it's not that bad already, but. Uh, yeah, you probably heard about uh, uh, some parties or political parties here in uh, Germany gaining power who are on the really, really right side, um, having also Nazis uh, along their, really? their midst and stuff like that. And wow. of course, they of course they don't. Uh, they are far, far apart from being a majority here, but. At least the fact that those forces are kind of like rising again wow. um, does give me uh, uh, yeah, something to think about. Mm. Oh, that's scary. Yeah. That's why I wrote, by the way, the song Stand Up and Fight. Because, uh, oh, really? Sometimes, yeah, because sometimes I think you just have to stand in for your, your, well, for your ideas and for your way of way to live. And, uh, and stuff like that, and um, well, Nazis is just my idea. <laughs> if it comes to the point, then of course I will stand up. <laughs> good, good. I hope so. That's a good song, by the way. That song. Yeah, love that whole album. So, what am I talking about? <laughs> uh, all right, uh, I'm trying to think. Anything else? Um, can't think of anything else. Anything else you want to say? Well, I mean, uh, what can I say? I mean, I'm I'm really pleased with the album. I think I mentioned that before. I think we showed this a hundred thousand times, so people know to buy the damn thing. Yeah, buy but, some real uh, music. But of course, what I always have to say is that even though that we are existing for twenty years, and of course we put a lot of energy and stuff into our work, and um, of course that is definitely one part of the success of our and Savior. Um, we just actually um, reached the charts uh, here wow. in Germany on the uh, 
so far highest position 54, which is uh, wow. of course not top notch, but uh, well, anyway, it's good it's, for a metal band because yeah, I mean it's not every metal band gets it's, it's 54 in the in the German LP charts along with everybody else who puts out records. So that's that's really cool. Yeah, and um, of course we have. Of course, our part in, in that, in creating this music and doing this and, and putting in our energies. But on the other hand, um, without the people supporting us out there, listening to our stuff, um, promoting um, our albums, buying them, attending to the shows and, uh, well, showing us their dedication for the band, um, which definitely uplifts us regularly. Mm -hmm. Um, without the, all these people out there, uh, we just wouldn't be at this point, you know. Yeah. And so, thank you for everybody out there for for supporting mm -hmm. um, and uh, helping our and Savior to get to this point in our career. Yeah. Did you ever you ever think you would be going this long? Oh, well, if you'd asked me in 1996, probably no. It was planned. I would just, I was. I never had this long-term plan or vision. You know? I was just thinking, "Hey, Pete, let's, right. let's do this album and see what comes." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, what um, whatever happened with Savage Circus? Is that band done? For me, pretty much, yes. Um, because uh, the, actually, there's no basis for, uh, for okay. Savage Circus. It's not um, it's me. I if if I feel like. You know, the problem with, with Savage Circus was that uh, basically I was doing 95% of the work uh -huh. and uh, I didn't, just, I didn't feel like doing this a third time in a row, you know. Mm, and, uh, yeah. And so I decided I'd rather use my energy and, and focus on Iron Savior again. And mm. uh, to be honest, I think that was a very wise decision. And yeah, I think so too. If it comes to the point that I, that I, do feel that I have to do something else because I, it's not that I'm that I uh, regret doing uh, Savage Circus. That was a very interesting time for me, also in terms as a musician and songwriting and stuff like that. Uh, but Iron Savior, in the end, is m more the kind of music I really want to play and perform myself. But it was very thrilling to do all the songwriting, write all these 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 songs and. Uh, and dive into a uh, let's put it like this totally or not totally but in a rather different approach of writing songs and uh, if i feel like that i have to do this again some at some point in my life then uh, i probably could imagine that i would do um, another project mm. uh, not necessarily called savage circus uh, but uh, hey, maybe. Well, if you <laughs> if you if you stumble across a project called Evil Eyes, then it's probably mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> Any chance ever working with Kai again or anything, or do you still work with him at all? Well, I mean, I work with Kai uh, privately, years <laughs> 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 and uh, here and there. But no, I think uh, on, a, on a music uh, uh, musical music wise, I think it's better to stay apart from each other, just like we yeah. did. Um, mm -hmm. because you know, um, that, that of course, Kai's uh, Kai helped quite a bit in the in the first days of Iron Savior. Well, right. when Iron Savior was brought to life, of course, um, well, his uh, his uh, popularity, of course, made the band also popular because hey, there's Kai Hansen in there, you know. Yeah. But on the other hand, it also was kind of like a curse for the band in those years, really. Also, I mean, there are, of course, there are supporters, but there are also haters out there, mm. you know. And of course, the haters, they they said, oh, Peaches brought, brought Kai to the band because he wants the attention and just for the name and blah, 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 and stuff like that. And um, and also, every interview was basically about Kai Hansen. What is Kai Hansen doing? And uh, it took me quite some years to get rid of this Kai Hansen ghost to, to be <laughs> because I mean he, he just left he, he, after yeah. Dark Assault he left the band and and uh, you know when when I was doing the Megatropolis album and I still had to or better even or bettering them and Megatropolis album five or ten almost ten years later and still questions of Kai Hansen was the, wow. the main issues on interviews I said hey wait a minute 
Stop this. <laughs> I really don't want to talk about Kai Hansen anymore. I think everything about Kai Hansen is said yeah. in terms of Iron Savior. And if you, if you want to, if you want to know what's happening in Iron Savior, just go ahead asking. If you want to talk about Kai, then you better call Kai himself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so and well, uh, but okay, okay. Now t- today, this is really over. I have to say with the. Um, with the comeback album, the landing, this ghost of Kai Hansen was really eliminated, and I think yeah. um, the landing for this, for this, uh, therefore, the landing is a very important album in our career for Iron Savior because when we returned to the scene with the landing, it was, I think, even the dumbest idiot understood. Iron Savior is a totally independent force. Right. It's nothing, it's it's not a project or anything or the second band of Kai Hansen or blah blah blah, anything mm-hmm. else. It's just Iron Savior. No. And by the way, a lot of people really um sort of like uh well it's well realized that they were actually missing Iron Savior because there was four years of uh, nothingness before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the landing, yeah. Very connected to this album. Still, uh, also, still a lot of songs that we, we from this one. Play live. Heavy metal never dies. It's a band. That's play a good song. Of yeah. all of the heroes needs to be played. Yeah. Definitely. But anyway, the truth uh, for the Kill or Get Killed, we're gonna get seven songs from that one and bring it to stage because it's so good that we have to get. All this ones, really I wouldn't. Songs. It's amazing. I would. I thought, wow. I thought was in the beginning. I thought, let's let's do let's make five. It turned <laughs> out that we had, we did really have seven songs. Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you if you played the whole album. I mean, that's that good. Did you ever think about doing that, like a whole album live, or because that seems to be the thing lately? Yeah, actually, it is something that uh, that has come to my mind since we. Almost do this, do this the, the entire album already. Mm. Uh, why not add the, the, the remaining three tracks as well? Yeah. But on the other hand, um, we only have 17, let's say, spots on our live set. Seven mm. are filled with Kill or Get Killed. And of course, we have to play those songs I just named. We right. have to play Heavy Metal Never Dies, Hall of the Heroes, Atlantis Falling, and some other stuff from uh, from earlier times that fans really want to hear and they and of course we have to deliver that and and so i think seven seven songs from kill or get killed is really awesome and That's good. you get most of the album yeah yeah any is there any song that you have that you cannot stand anymore iron savior wise yeah mm, no not really no they're all, love all your songs no <laughs> some That's of good the enough. babies are really 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 but they're no ugly babies all right. not really no, it's not that I. It's, no, no, no. It's not that I. Fortunately, I never wrote a song which I would hate to become a hit, and I would have to play it all the time. No. Yeah, yeah. For example, just saying, "Harry Metal Never Dies." We played that. I don't know how often, but I still love this song. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like every every album, I, I love every album that you that you've put out, and you really don't have any bad songs, which I, it's hard to say about any band, you know. So you're you're doing whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. So, and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass either. I'm serious. You can tell I own all these freaking albums. <laughs> My camera's not spot. All right. Well, I'm not gonna take up any more of your time. I see it's eleven o'clock and it's six o'clock at my neck of the woods. Six o'clock. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so go to bed. <laughs> it's eleven o'clock in your area. Uh, yeah. Uh, go to bed, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on. I'm glad we settled all this nonsense with the time difference. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and please actually, go first, out. Actually, and first time us. that that ever happened to me. Usually, I don't know. Usually, but it, it's uh, obviously exactly this week where you already on uh, on. And, oh, come on, yeah, okay. We that out. <laughs> we don't want to dig into it's, that again. <laughs> it's all straightened out now. Okay. But Wait. really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Go bye. Iron Savior, kill or get killed. You'll love it. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Wayne. For no problem. Nice little video chat here. And, uh, well, enjoy the rest of the day. And 
I think I'm going to go to bed now. Have a good night. The old heavy metal man needs to rest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good night. Right. Okay. You too. Bye-bye.